Purpose Movement, exploring their vision for the future. And we know that they have the 12 pillars that they hope is going to transform the country when they do take charge. And they have the seven non-negotiables. You can join our conversation by sending us a WhatsApp message on 055 Five five six ten thirty four. We're streaming across social media, GTV Ghana, on YouTube at the GBC Ghana. This morning, the one in charge of the discussion for the new force movement is Hubert Beidou. He's lead economic analyst. Good morning, Hubert. Good morning. Welcome Martin. to the show. Thank you. Thank Good. you. Good. So we heard from the leader of the new force, uh, Nana Bediako, when. He launched the manifesto and the policies, the transformation, the big transformation plan and agenda. Um, we'll, we'll bring an insight of um, all of this because we, we covered it and then we brought you stories about that. So let's, let's bring the insight now and then we'll sizzle it all down with the conversation. Jobs in 10 years. But to be honest with you, a machine, a plant, is the only thing that can give you jobs in three different shifts. Eight hours times three a day. That is what I call 24-hour economy. You need industrialization. Who sells Gary for 24 hours in Makola? The women in Kejetia and Kantamanto cannot work for 24 hours. It would take a factory, it would take a plant, a production line to give three shifts a day. No industrialization, no 24-hour economy. I have brought you your economic of freedom. About food, I've been talking about good reserves, I've been talking about food reserves. All these reserves, 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 it's for the state, it's for the nation. This is what I call a Japadier, the real a Japadier. Because you need an equity of what belongs to you. As one, we have to have a share of whatever that is on our grounds. We have to get jobs from it. We have to create wealth out of it. And we have to get the skill set out of what belongs to us. It's on our ground. We are the landlords of Ghana. It should be shared among us equally. But with all the reserves, there's one thing that I would like to add. And I know you, we probably never thought of it. But why do we buy money? Why do we have to go to England or go to Switzerland to Delarue to print our money? And after we, f we fly or ship the money, before we have money. What happened to the industrial power that we're creating now? We are going to print money at home. We don't need to go to England or America to print money. We don't need to. Yes, so there's one on the currency revitalization, which is part of the seven non-negotiables. And we'll get to that, and Hubert will break that down for us. But Hubert, um, what's the core ideology that Nana Kwame Bediako and the New Force Movement is trying to drive to be able to transform Ghana? Well, uh, good morning once again. Uh, good morning to all the New Force members, especially to Nana Kwame Bediako. Mm. Um, if you make an attempt, Malti, to get into the mind of Nana Kwame Bidiako. What you see is a very successful young businessman who is concerned about where the country is heading to. And he seeks to move the country from reckless spending to a realm of investment and purchasing. And once you get into that realm, you are thinking of prudential management. And, and the practice of prudential management um, emanates from a conviction of what is ethically and aesthetically right. And most importantly, what is economically expedient. This is the main agenda of Nana Kwame Bidiako, investment and development.
making the country profitable and great. Okay. Investment, development, making the country profitable. Let's go through the 12 pillars of um, economic freedom proposed by the New Force Movement. I mean, it, ex it spans from gold to, you know, agriculture, transportation, What I remember when he mentioned taking the sea to Kumasi or expanding the waterways to the Ashanti region and maybe the concept didn't go down well with a lot of Ghanaians because they kept saying, well, how is this possible? <laughs> you know, so um, kindly walk us through what the apostolic governance seeks to do. Well, the, the, the apostolic governance is simply running the country with just 12 ministers okay. and a president. And, and I know that Ghanaians, some Ghanaians think this is not um, achievable mm -hmm. and it's not realistic, but it's not their fault. Um, Ghanaians conceptually are aware and know what they want, mm -hmm. but experientially, politicians and bad leadership mm -hmm. have made us believe that what we want is not achievable. And if we are ever going to achieve it, we need a largesse of ministers and, and civil servants. Mm -hmm. And the president has to single-handedly appoint 6,000 people of which majority are unproductive. This is what we want to put an end to. We want to run the leanest and most efficient governance model mm -hmm. ever in the history of African politics. Mm -hmm. This is the apostolic governance. Well, does it still go to say that um, the fewer the better? I mean, couldn't a fewer ministers still loot and share? Well, the. The essence is not about looting and sharing. Mm -hmm. The essence is about efficiency. Okay. And, and the engineers will tell you that less is more. You know, the, we have built a culture mm -hmm. of the desire for clutter. And, and when you get into engineering, it can be financial engineering, it can be mechanical engineering, you see that there is beauty in simplicity. So it's not about the looting and the sharing. It's more about the efficiency. Right. So, um, I mean, let me, let me bring in some of the things that the new force, your leader, has said that he would do. Connecting regions, the 16 regional, you know, development plan. I heard him say that the western region is the richest region in the country, $412 billion worth of minerals, agri, all of what we need to transform our economy and not be, you know, dependent on foreign um, support or help. What is the plan for the regional transformation, the 16 regional transformation as well? Great question. Um, our country has gotten to a point where we have to be serious mm. and by that we mean that we have to get every region activated and the way you do that is to first deconcentrate the capital okay and next you have to devolve power from the central government and the next you have to make the country truly fiscally decentralized. Don't you say that's already happening with the district assemblies? No, it, it isn't. It's, it's a facade. It's an illusion mm. of democracy. Mm. You know, our constitution makes the president a de facto dictator. Does it? Yes, it does. And these are some of the things we seek to change. We want to make every region profitable. Mm. And that's why we are not going to appoint regional ministers. Okay. The regions must be run by CEOs. So we tell Ghanaians that we need to run the regions with 16 CEOs who have actual executive duties. These CEOs are to oversee, supervise, and make sure that the industries we are going to set up deliver and they meet set KPIs. Mm. And so you mentioned the Western region. The Western region has attributable mineral resources, nominally, of about $412 billion. Mm -hmm. And if you consider 
um, compound annual growth rates or growth return of, of gold alone, and you make a 10-year projection, you are talking about about $1.5 trillion of wealth in the central western region. And, and it, you cannot say that they feel this in their pockets. Mm. But why has it happened this way? This is what we want to change. We want to make all the regions work again. Okay. Want to make all the regions work again. Um, let's break it down. The regions have food. They have water transportation. They have mineral resources. Um, if you're connecting the regions, making them independent on their own, what's the big plan with transportation, with cutting goods from the farms to market centers, from the regions to the capital, for export as well? Yes, we, we have said on, on several platforms that Ghana is at a point where we have to find the locus of the line of least resistance mm. and what that means is we have to do what is cost effective mm -hmm. what is the cheapest investment but gives us the best returns and once you get into that realm and you're thinking of transportation you begin to think of what to do with the waters how to dredge them and create canals how to create reservoirs that will feed the canals, and how to create sub-regional interconnected railway network across the country. Mm. And you construct them all the way to the borders. This, this is a paradigm shift, and this is what we should have done many decades ago. We began with Singapore, we began with South Korea, and they have all these. Why haven't we been able to do this? Mm. We have a failed leadership. And, and the earlier we change it, the better. So, um, talking about water transportation, the canals, you mean you're going to you know, expand like the Volta Lake? Absolutely. To get to places that you didn't have water Absolutely. transport there? Absolutely. And, and, mm -hmm, and once you do that, what you actually achieve is that you induce entrepreneurial hunger. Right in these so-termed villages um, that have suffered economic anemia. Right. You, you induce cross-border investment and you create a lot of jobs that they otherwise would have never thought of. Mm. And all this is in the 10-year plan? These are in the 12 pillars. In the 12 and, pillars. And the 12 pillars culminate okay. into the 10-year plan, plan, which are the seven non-negotiables of Nanakwami Bidiakon. Right. Um, well, I, I, I see the Eastern Corridor as well, and on the water connectivity and the railway, I know that, crucially, since that links to the Togo border and there's a lot of farming activities there, transportation is crucial in that area. And let's tie it into health as well. What's the big plan for health? Transportation is key for health because in rural communities, how to get to health centers is a problem. And then the health infrastructure itself is a problem. Well, you know, the big problem with health in Ghana is affordability. Um, and that's the reason we don't even have quality health care, because the investor don't want to put money in there because they know you can't pay. Mm -hmm. And so if you check um, Pillar 6, you find the SNIT revolution. It's a paradigm shift. Okay. We want to create a market capital for investors. And what we want to do is that we want to change the usual waiting period of 35 to 40 years um, before you get your SNIT benefit. We want to turn the SNIT into a state insurance corporation where you can access your claim after five years of contribution. And this claim will cover health accommodation and education. Okay. We have found that these are the three basic needs of Ghanaians and those basic needs don't change with age. They are constant. And once we are able to do that, we can create a market capital that gives investors cashback guarantee and then they can build the health facilities 
they can build the, the health, uh, the med medical equipment that will assure people of quality health care. So that's the SNIT revolution. Okay, um, let's look at industrication. Is it, is it a tie of industri industry and education? Industrialization and education. Okay. okay, break it down for us. Well, you have a country where we still study from syllabus that are not relevant. And that's why we have millions of graduates who are not fit for industry because they do not have the skill set that are required by the industries and, and the multinational companies. And so the first thing you want to do is to overhaul the curriculum mm. and begin to build a generation that have an industrial mindset. Okay. You want to breed entrepreneurs. You want to breed business leaders. And most importantly, you want to begin a mental revolution. And what we, we mean by that is we want to establish a national conscience, a nation that is socially cohesive, a nation that loves the people and, and they love what we produce. Once you are able to establish that, especially at the basic level, you put into the minds of the kids. And, and epigenetics say that um, the first seven years of your life is the most important because that's where you get everything from. Formative, yeah. So you fix it in the first seven years at the basic level, not at the SHS level where mm. they, they are gone already. Mm -hmm. And so these are some of the things that we want to do. It's, it's a whole work. Right. We want to change Ghana. On industrication, what about this issue of, you know, is the rich that can afford set? Because there's education and industry being tied together currently, but maybe not in the manner in which you have just explained. So it's only the rich who can afford setting, and as you say, latter parts of their lives, tertiary institutions that immediately they finish, they are guaranteed of a job in a certain company because the school has that connection to. But those in public universities, those who can afford, that doesn't happen. How is, how is it going to simmer down to everyone? Well, like you rightly said, you know, only the rich can afford certain types of education. But if you have a country where only the rich can afford um, then you have a very big problem. You are sitting on a time bomb because um, you are breeding a nation where people are embittered and it's just a matter of time that, you know, they will just try and make an attempt to emerge from the maelstrom of all this randomness and that can end into something you don't want to, mm. um, it to end into. Mm -hmm. um, so you first have to create the jobs. This is what we are talking about, the 16th Regional Industrial Revolution, and you have to build the skill. The reason countries like China have developed is because they have the skill. Okay. It's not just because they produce things that are cheap. Mm -hmm. They have a country that is resilient. They have a country that is ready to work around their clock. So we need to build and weave this kind of nation. Success doesn't happen by chance. We can wish, Ghanaians can desire to have a successful nation, but the courage to begin is more important than the will to succeed. Right. And we want to begin now. This is the vision of Nana Kwame The courage to begin. is more important than the will to succeed. Nice. Um, let me bring it down to sports and creative industry since we're talking about industrication what's the big plan for sports and the creative arts space ownership and control okay and and what we mean by that is if you really want to help the creative industry and in sports you first have to own the tram lines that are carrying your music that are carrying your movies, that are carrying the artwork. If the tram lines are owned by foreigners or foreign companies, what happens is that your artists and your entertainers will sell their catalog immediately once they are done. And so the real return stays outside of the country. 
because you don't own the tram lines. And that's what's happening right now. Exactly. You don't okay. own the distribution. So you need a true revamp of everything in this country. Mm. We first have to own the distribution channels. Then you can begin to think about royalties and what artists deserve and, and, and their fair share of what they have produced. And then you can think of the protection of, of intellectual property. You can think of um, regulations that borders around piracy, piracy. and what have you. Mm. So it's, it's more about ownership and control. Okay. How about sports? Sports, we seek to build um, 16 regional multifunctional facilities mm. all across the regions. Mm. And, and, and the reason you want to do that is you want to incorporate um, sports disciplines into the schools. Mm -hmm. And then you want to induce investor partnerships. Once you do that, then the scholarships will come in. And, and still, you go back to ownership and control. You own your talent. Right. Um, rather than, you know, having certain investors coming from Denmark, they set up here, and then they have the Kudus, they have the Fatau, Isahaku, and all of those guys. The money is going to the white people hmm. because we don't, we don't think about ownership and control. Right. We want to own and control what we have. We want to own our talents. We want to own our sports. We want to own our entertainment. I mean, I will, will, in finality, I would ask how all of this is going to be done. What money is going to be used to? What resources? Who are the partners, likely partners you're looking at? If you don't want to, you know, toe the line of indebtedness of Ghana going to the IMF and the World Bank, would want to know that. But the other pillar that I'm seeing here also is reserves, reserves, reserves. Yes. Reserves. Pillar four. Pillar four. And uh, you intelligently linked reserves to debt. Yes. Um, because, you know, that's exactly the problem we want to solve. Mm -hmm. We want to solve debt with reserves. Because if you don't have reserves, you don't have a bargaining power. Mm. If you don't have reserves, your country will plunge into inflationary depression. And, and I tell people that we are heading towards um, that stage. Why has it been so difficult to have reserves? Because our leaders have failed to think around those lines. Hmm. Listen, Ghana has more gold than any country in the world per square meter any country in the world hmm. and if we say economists say that you know gold is a natural hedge against inflation then we should have never had any problem with inflation hmm. you see what i'm saying but we don't have the consciousness of shoring up reserves we don't have the consciousness of ownership and control we just want to borrow we just want to be in debt. And, and the saddest thing is that our external debt is more than 41% of our GDP. The problem is not the debt. It's the external debt. It's the type of debt. Right. Because Japan has more than 105% of their GDP as debt. But that debt is owned to Japanese. Hmm. The debt is denominated in the Japanese yen. Currency. If your debt is denominated in euros and, and US dollars. dollars and you don't have reserves, the country will fail. Listen, the only reason Ghana has not collapsed and has not imploded yet is because Ghanaians are living vicariously through the diasporans. These guys are holding Ghana. They are pumping more than $6 billion into the country every year. They are building their houses. They are doing all the developments in the country. And they don't even have a say in our democratic process. They are holding the country. And so, Malti, we, we have a serious problem. We have a complex I, problem I just, as a country. I, I'm trying to understand how difficult it is to show up these reserves you talk about. Because if that's an alternative that's going to clear all of this indebtedness and you know, puts Ghana on a path of economic freedom. Why has it been so difficult? And how easy is it going to be for the New Force Movement to do it? Well, it's not an alternative. It's a must. You cannot develop a country without reserves. There is no developed country that doesn't have reserves. 
talk of America, talk of Switzerland, talk of Japan, mm -hmm. talk of China. They have thousands of tons of gold in reserves. And most of these countries buy the gold from us. They are mining our lands and they are destroying our water bodies and we don't have the gold. The leaders don't have a political will to borrow and pay debt. It doesn't work that way. They do that because it's a country and nothing will happen to us. Nobody can take the country to jail, you know. But we are suffering. We are plunging the country into, into what we don't want it to be. And if, you, if, if we do have the reserves, shore up our reserves, we don't have to increase taxes? Well, that, that's, that's an interesting question. Mm. Um, you know, Malti, mm -hmm. no country mm. ever developed on high taxes. Mm. Yes. No country ever, and you know, I challenge anybody to prove us wrong. Nana Kwame Bediako wants a new economic order. And this order must be grounded in private enterprise, protected for national interest. Now, if you want to induce entrepreneurial hunger, you don't disturb the people with high taxes. You can increase the tax net you formalize the economy to get more people paying taxes, but not increase of the tax itself. Okay. No country ever has developed on increased taxes. And, and governments and leaders who don't have ideas are the ones who increase taxes to solve problems. Hmm. You have to go into real revenue generation. You have to get into investment and purchasing once you get out of the realm of reckless spending, these become apparent. They become glaringly obvious to you. And, and, and you allow the natural hierarchy of economic activity to prevail. Right. That's what it is. Um, currency revitalization. Since we're talking about, you know, reserves, debt, what's that looking like? Is it the one single currency for all African countries that a lot of you know, people like Julius Malema and all the activists have been preaching. What, what is it? Well, uh, a single currency is not a bad idea, is it? <laughs> uh, well, you're the economist, <laughs> so tell us. Um, but, but most importantly, Malti, um, you cannot think of a truly economically integrated Africa without um, cross-border payments. It, it, it's, it's the only way. Right industrication industry and education and we are live on gtv ghana we're streaming there so you can leave your comments there i'm just going to read a few of uh, the questions here or comments anointed sam joins us on facebook and he says hubert is well learned and knows what he's talking about um the new force in Idaswaba, okay. Um, no insults, good presentation, brilliant solutions. This is what Ghana needs, not what uh, the other parties are saying. Well, this is what um, Anointed Salm is saying. Um, other questions. The new first movement is leading Ghana to a new, or comments, I should say, to a new perspective. NDC and MPP both have had their term, and it's fair we all give ourselves the chance to change level someone is asking how old you are they think you look really young and <laughs> they are enjoying your economics um okay uh, adam dogbe the new first movement is leading ghana to a new perspective thank you adam listen to him very well new force hope is coming ebenezer jachi joins in with that one um greetings to my brother hubert okay well, send us your thoughts and your comments if you have questions, because we've seen the questions on Twitter um, before the manifesto launch and even after the manifesto launch. So if there's anything that tickles you, send it us on 055-556-1034. Hubert, let me bring your attention to energy cities now in the seven non-negotiables. What do you plan? What does a new force plan to do with this? I was saying earlier that there are still a lot of rural communities that need electrification. Well, when you want to build industry, you have to consider energy. Mm -hmm. And in, in consideration of energy, 
you think of tariffs and how to create uh, competition, how to make your tariffs competitive, because the investor is thinking of how to power the industries. And like we were saying initially about reserves, we already import more than $1 billion of gas oil every year. And we have oil that we can refine. So once you reverse this, you are already on the path of becoming a, an energy superpower. Apart from that, we are making a bold statement that Ghana has to get into nuclear energy. Okay. Because what Nana Kwame Bidiako is thinking about is beyond the shores of this country. There are more than 50% of Africans, about 640 million people who don't have access to energy. Yes. And as bad as it is, it is an opportunity for us. If we don't do this as a country and as a continent, we will forever be in the palms of, hmm. you know, the imperialists. And, and we're talking, the, talk, the talk is about green energy now. What are we looking at? Solar, um, electric cars? Well, you need, you need a power mix. Okay. So you, 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 you have to have a consolidated energy source. You have to have the hydro, which we have already, mm -hmm. the thermal, which we have already, and we have to go big into solar farms. We have to go big into windmills. windmills. We mm -hmm. have to go big into biomass because right. we produce a lot of waste and we are not using it for anything. But you need the nuclear energy. The initial cost is massive, but... It has yeah, a half life of forty expensive. to sixty years, mm. uh, so the benefit is enormous, and that's what I keep saying that we have to find the locus of the line of least resistance. What investments can we make as a country and receive the maximum return? Okay. Without the energy city, we can't power the sixteen industries that we seek to build. Amazing. Energy cities, windmills, we already have thermal power, and the big plan is for nuclear energy as well, is what the new force is saying. Let's go to King Kaf now. He's at the board, and let's uh, let him bring your thoughts and your messages to us. Kaf, over to you. What are our people saying? All righty. So uh, the reasonable youth in this country, we are all voting for the new force because we have realized that the NPP and DC have taken us for granted for so Long. Um, more messages. Zero five 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 six ten thirty four, and he wants to ask about the paradigm for persons with disabilities. Uh, there's a question there. Okay. Um, good morning, Malti and Hubert. Uh, Great intellectual questions and dispositions. What is the future of the freedom pillars granted? The challenges of the South South dialogue. So you, you want to take that cover? Hubert. Or we take some more. Uh, I want to know how the new force intends to raise the $50 billion from other African nationals owning, right. uh, owning Ghanaian passports. Yeah. Mm. Right. Okay. Um, so, uh, in terms of the $50 billion, once you have a booming economy, everybody wants to be part of it. And I tell you, there are more than a million Africans and, you know, mm. Nigerians form the majority of these. And yeah. they are seeking the Ghanaian passport already, even with the state that we are in. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is to monetize the immigration so that it can become a free source of funds for you. But, but that's not the only thing. It's a way to begin African unification. Because for so long, we have been regionally separated. Mm. And internally, we've been tribally separated. And that's no good for our development as a country and, and as, a, as African people. So apart from the 50 billion that we want to raise, it's more about African unification. Um, somebody asked a question on disability. Yes, PWDs. You want to weave a country that is truly a fair state, mm. not a welfare state. You don't want to build a country of freeloaders. We want to build a country where people with skill set and capacity have equal access to jobs. They have equal access to opportunities that will as well move them up the ladder 
of economic status. And that's what we want to build. We don't want to, as it were, segmentate the country and say these are disabled, these are not. Okay. It's a fair state. But your, your pillars also talk about equity, um, equality, and Absolutely. empowerment. So definitely you would look at what would help them Absolutely. match up to yeah. people who are able to come. 055 556 1034. I want to know the plan for teachers since they are going to be the main implementers of this industry. Education. Mm. Plan for teachers. Uh, somebody says the MPP and DC have taken Ghanaians for a right for too long. We really think about ourselves and the future generations. They say, what is their plan for immediate solutions out of our current situation? Can I say fuel prices, food prices? You've been very articulate, but the question is the problems comfort in Ghana are crashing and we need solutions now, mm. not in the future. How do you respond to that? Um, uh, those are lots of questions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's one on teachers uh, and then on Galamse. Um, let me um, rush through quickly. Okay. Um, with, with, with the teaching, we already discussed the SNET revolution, mm -hmm. um, which is to create a market capital for the education, the housing, and the health okay. sector. Once you have that market capital and invest, investors are coming in, they are building the schools and they are paying the teachers. So, you know, it, it's like they own the teachers and they have to pay them well. It's, it's not on the, on the government anymore. Mm -hmm. They are paying them top city, not top dollar, top city. Who are these investors? Are they Ghanaian? It can be anybody, because okay. if you're building a country, you're looking at domestic investments and FIIs and FDIs. Mm -hmm. So wherever the money is coming from, we seize it. You seize the money. We'll give you a last word on Galam. Say, but Kaf still has some more. OK, so a lot of people are excited about the conversations. Uh, we need a new force to build the name citizens of the NDC, ADP jail. Um, Eugene has said like 10,000 of the same thing. Yeah. He says, uh, when we're going to be speaking, all negativity is bowing shame. Eugene from a brief, uh, just in love with the, with the message. Any more? Uh, please, can you ask your new force guests what they'll do about public transport, transportation when they come to power? Uh, what, 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 what has, what's your plan for public transportation? Yes, um, uh, Pillar 2, we mentioned water transportation mm -hmm. and sub-regional Regional railway, railway network, which is one of the most important things to do as a country. Um, you want to be able to help people to move freely across the regions mm -hmm. and, and continentally also because I've already said that what we are thinking about transcends the shores of Ghana and, and once you do that you inspire other African countries to continue and that's how you create an economically integrated um, continent. How about internally? That question I'm sure also would beg the minds of people on fares, pricing. Um, when fuel goes up, transport unions increase fares. The cap on who should increase what, how much should be increased as well. Yeah, but, but Malti, if you're a country that is importing over 2 million metric tons of gas oil, like I, I said earlier, how do you control fuel prices? You, it, it comes back to ownership and control. You have to at least cut this importation into half. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are an oil-producing country, but we are a net importer of oil. Mm -hmm. And petroleum products we have to reverse this and it has to be done immediately lest there's nothing we can do about fuel prices and transportation and um, law affairs and whatever okay you, yeah. national security and data sovereignty excellent it's, it's you know I see um, politicians talking about database of the EC and data integrity listen this is the new age the world is moving into Web3, and so we have to move all our data onto a distributed ledger technology, which is truly transparent, it is immutable, and you can't compromise it. This reduces corruption, this reduces fraud, this creates transparency and brings investor confidence. And it's one of the things that we want to do, Pillar 11. Mm -hmm. Finally, Galam Say, and I'm just going to serve you uh, some of <laughs> yes, um, this. I'm sure probably if I didn't ask you, well, I need to give it a good shake. Ask you before you saw this, you'd be wondering what this is. Mm -hmm. And this is from months ago from one of our rivers. Which river is this? River Pra, I believe. Ooh. Yes. I'm, I'm sure it's over a year. 
So that, that's yours, Hubert. What's the new forces grand agenda for Galamse? I mean, you've talked about reserves, 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 mining, and doing it well. What's, how are we turning back these our water bodies into the clean, clear water that we know? Multi, we don't want to deal with the symptoms. We want to go to the root. If people don't have an alternative source of income or living, they will do, um, they will test economic activities and they will find out that there is a lot of money in, in gold and that's what they will do. It doesn't matter. They will do whatever it takes. They will risk their life because they are suffering. Um, and so what you first have to do is to get the triangulation right. What I mean by the triangulation is the gold, the water bodies, and the farmlands. You have to create an economic harmony such that they all fall into a rhythm that brings everybody in tune because it's already gone. People have already tested the activity. And like I was saying, you have to allow the natural hierarchy of economic activity to prevail. It's already going on. You have to clear the water. You have to invest in bioremediation. But you have to formalize the activity and regulate it. And lastly, if you don't have infinitesimal detail of where your lands are, where your reserves are, where the gold is, you cannot begin to think of clamping down Galamsey. Okay. And that's what the leaders don't know how to do. <sighs> Know where your reserves are. Yes. And then you know how to clamp down. Absolutely. Thank you so much for Thank coming you, on the show Thank and talking you. to us. Um, just come by and what we've just discussed and broken down is the new force movements, 12 pillars, the apostolic governance and the seven non-negotiables. We've cut across health care, minerals, sports, agroeconomics, the biggest um, Agri sector shoring up our investment in our gold reserves, oil, currency revitalization, cross border integration, and transport. I've been speaking to Hubert Beidou, lead economic analyst of the New Force Movement. I am Alti Sider Sadek, and you can watch the show again, or this segment again, I should say, on GTV Ghana on Facebook. We're back with more on GTV Breakfast. Stay with us.